Right, welcome back guys. So today we will be looking at worksheet 1 for mass weight and density. Alright, uh, so as usual, um, along the video, any, any point in time along the video, if you need to pause so that you can double check your answer, copy down your correct answer and so on, please do so. Uh, and also, if there's anything that you're not too sure about during the explanation, please feel free to contact your physics teacher. Right, so let's get started. So first of all, um, to define mass, mass is basically the amount of matter inside a body. All right, and uh, it is usually measured with the unit of grams, as you can see over here. All right, but the SI unit itself should actually be kg, kilograms. All right, and we measure mass by using this kind of equipment, which is basically your beam balance, as well as your electronic balance. All right. So these are the names for it. The ones that we see in the lab is usually the electronic balance, um, except that uh, the ones that the models that we are using in the lab doesn't come with the box, right? So it's not as uh, accurate as what you see in the diagram, but it is still quite accurate. I think it's to uh, two or three decimal places, right? Now anyway, moving on. So uh, and when we talk about mass, the one thing that always comes to mind is inertia. So inertia, as you have studied in your own self-studies and so on, inertia is basically a reluctance towards any changes in motion, all right? And uh, basically, if the object is already, if it's at rest, all right, if it's originally at rest, it would prefer to stay at rest. And it, if, if it is already moving, then it would prefer to continue in this state of motion, that means continue moving in the same direction and so on and so forth, all right? And the only thing that the inertia depends on is actually mass, all right? The bigger the mass, the bigger the inertia, right? So because of that, uh, whenever we want to measure inertia, we want to know how much inertia there is or uh, an object have, we actually can look at the mass itself, right? And this is actually a very uh, standard example. So like, you know, when you're sitting in a bus and the bus driver slams on a brake for whatever reason, uh, you will usually feel your body jerking to the front, all right? And that is actually because of inertia. So that's why when you're traveling in a moving vehicle, uh, you should always wear a seatbelt because if you do not have, if you, if you do not have a seatbelt on, all right, uh, when the bus driver slams on the brake, you will definitely continue to move forward because initially your body was moving forward and then when the bus stopped, your body will want to continue moving forward. And this is, of course, due to inertia, all right? And if there is no seatbelt, uh, a likely poss uh, possible outcome would be that uh, you might end up knocking, bam uh, bump bumping into the windscreen, right? And of course, for an elephant, because an elephant has got so much more mass than you, all right, it will have greater inertia. So because of that, it will be very difficult for the elephant to slow down, to move in a different direction, that means to change direction, or to come to a stop, all right? So that's why if an elephant is charging after you, then uh, the logical thing to do is to run uh, in a zigzag direction kind of thing, all right? And with that, uh, oops, sorry about that. And with that, we are at the end of worksheet one, all right? Uh, and I will see you guys again when we come to worksheet two. Take care.